Welcome Yay. to Deep Space Fine. This is episode six. I had to look at my piece of paper because I couldn't remember. <laughs> um, welcome, welcome. Uh, I will run through sponsors and then everyone can introduce themselves. Um, so let's get this out of the way so we could talk about our wonderful, lovely sponsors. First, I will say Modifius because they gave us the awesome books, which we are using their system. <laughs> It's beautiful. It's hefty. It smells pretty nice. Um, we are also sponsored by Fantasy Grounds, which is what we will be using to roll dice during the game. You'll see it on the screen. It's wonderful. Um, and you could go to fantasygrounds.com and get the, the application to try it for free. It's great. And I don't have any miniatures on me, but if you want a miniatures, you can get them from Whalen Games, which is at whalinggames.co.uk and you can get D&D, you can get Warhammer, you can get 40k and you can get them for 20% off which is pretty great. And also, last but not least is Tabletop Loot which they are giving away sets of dice with every, I believe every episode that Encounter or Roleplay does. Um, and you can use exclamation point sponsor and chat to see all the relevant links that I just described. Um, but if we want to roll through, if you want to introduce yourself and tell a little bit about who you're playing, we could start with Hadil. It's me, your friend, Hadil. I play Tamal, a Vulcan medical officer. Tula has seen fit to move into my quarters. Everything is covered in crystals. That's cool. The end. Oh, yeah. And, and Tamal was not here last time. I was there. But uh, I will tell you that it, and well, We'll, we'll re I'll recap after, but you're, you're okay. not in your crystal covered room anymore. Just Thank kidding. <laughs> and I still Lisa. have the crystal, the rose quartz necklace, so that's what matters. Good. Forever. The real tragedy is that we lost all those crystals. Um, <laughs> yeah. My name is Lisa Chen. I am playing Tula Chalur, uh, who is an elderly Betazoid woman, uh, used to living a life of luxury, modeling intergalactic space fashions, uh, but now she is retired. She also has a mysterious past, the Obsidian Order. Um, but she just got shot into the Gamma Quadrant to die. So that's great. That's where I am. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, what? And, I'm sorry. <laughs> you missed a lot. What? Yeah, you, you missed a lot. lot. <laughs> I'll We're probably going to die. Maybe. Cool. And with her beautiful new blue hair, it's very refreshing and, and beautiful, is Blue Jay. So refreshed. Very refreshed. I am, you know, I just wanted to fit with the space theme. Um, mm -hmm. But you forgot one of the sponsors for the show. It's Wait, Space Frank's Hot Sauce. Oh. Space Frank's Space Hot Sauce. Space, space Frank's Space Hot Sauce. Space Hot Sauce. You put it on literally anything and it Number will taste better. <laughs> put it on a Ferengi's ear. It will taste better. I'm not even put, joking. Put it on a space sock. Ooh. Putting on a Ferengi's ear, that's a little spicy. <laughs> that's very spicy, that's why it's hot sauce, because it makes things <laughs> extremely hot. Mm. Um, anyway, uh, you can, uh, I'm Blue Jay, and I'm playing Lidra Odan, a 27-year-old 20, joined Trill um, symbiont Odan, who you might remember from a few episodes of the Star Trek The Next Generation, where he made out with Beverly Crusher a lot. There was a lot of that. Mm. I'm different now. It's a different. new me. It's a, a new, new me. New me. New me. <laughs> Same symbiote, different host. Yeah. New year, new host. Yeah. Um, Just cycle the room. But to recap, since like I said, Hadil was not with us last time, so she needs to know as well. Um, overall, we started on the space station, Deep Space Nine, and basically some funky fungus stuff started happening and not happening and then happening again. And Lydra's seeing a lot of weird shit that she's not happy about and things are getting crazy. And then finally they went on a nice little Dungeons and Dragons other sweet vacation and they came back to find that the habitat section of the station that they stayed at was physically infested with fungus and Cisco came up with a plan 
to forego completely destroying them by sending them into the wormhole and faking their deaths by imploding that section of the station. So basically we pick up with everyone being immediately where we left off, which is everyone is being loaded onto this kind of Federation class cargo convoy. Um, you can see as you're being loaded into it, kind of herded into it, there are several, quite a few civilians going with you. Um, and as well as the stasis chamber that contained Perrin's body, you see being wheeled in as well. And Anval's body, since that was kept for testing. So basically anything relating to it is being shoved onto this ship along with yourselves. Um, and you get on the ship and you are sent straight into the wormhole. Um, when they it load seems like uh, Perrin on the ship, mm -hmm. there's definitely like a moment where like Lydra is like tempted to look at it, but then like when she tries to move her like body closer to the like weird container that that she's in, she just like can't. Like she physically cannot, and so she just like kind of is like sitting as far away as she can get from that on the um cargo transport or whatever and like looking really morose and being like it's probably for the best like i couldn't do anything anyway i'm a failure no. it's great <laughs> oh, no. yeah and and if you recall last episode cisco had specified he's kind of sending this and in, in He's hoping that the science and medical officers that are with you, which are primarily Lydra and Tamal, will be able to kind of still figure out what's going on and and save them all. But he's and he's you have an open channel to Deep Space Nine, but as you get onto the ship, you kind of see it is it's very rickety. Um, there's like sections. It used to be at some point in its life, Federation, um, possibly just to ferry things back and forth. Um, it kind of has a little bit of Klingon graffiti in various spots, so it's definitely been vandalized. Um, it's not very large. It, it only has four sections in it, including a north section, south se section, a west section, and east section, which you can find out what's in each of them as you explore it. Isn't um, it in, on ships like port and starboard? Yeah, well, I don't know which like, direction is which. So, <laughs> like, like, like helm, stern, port, and starboard. I think port is left because it has the same number as of letters as left. Can I? Would it be space, spaceport, and space sport? Still, it's it's, it's just it's, it's just, just port. No, there's no space. <laughs> no, it's just, it, there's no space here. Well, for my sake, I gave just cardinal directions. No, that's totally totally fine. <laughs> I was just like I was, I was just being a Baldor. <laughs> being it's a Baldor. It's Hellman's turn. Uh, turn. How dare you? Um, so yeah, you you enter the ship and it it immediately takes off. There's no captain. There's no one captaining it. It's definitely got a pre-programmed route. Um, that's kind of locked down and it's it's knows where it's going so you are on this ship with a a, a host of very confused individuals so i'm one of them <laughs> how could this how could this happen how could your federation do this I'll look at tamal and Lydra very accusingly I'm like hiding in a corner being sad. Okay, well, I will look at Tamal accusingly then. Um, isn't it, I mean, wouldn't it be Tula's Federation too? Is, is that how it works? How does this work? She's not. She's what is not, colonialism? Uh, <laughs> what is colonialism? For 200, I'll take what is colonialism for 200, <laughs> Alex. Um, I, I think work, that the Federation, the Federation um, is everybody, and Starfleet is just me and Tamal. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. this sucks. Um, observing... Will... Oh, no, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say, Tamal will, like, take the quartz that she, like, the quartz necklace that she's been keeping because it's evidence, um, <laughs> in her in her her pocket and she will hand it she'll just like hold it out and say nothing and just like as she's trying to hand it to you 
That is so kind, Tamal. Yes, I do need some extra comfort now. I really appreciate uh, you, you letting me use this gift that I gave you. And uh, <laughs> on. she feels instantly like it might be a placebo effect, but like she's strengthened and calmed immediately. Good thinking, Tamal. And I'll kind of look through the chaos and say, well, I guess we need to make the most of the situation that we're in. Uh, someone needs to organize this. We need to figure out what living quarters are going to look like um, and get people into their own spaces. A sense of your own space will help calm everybody. Um, and once we're calm, we can we can deal with this with this disease. Tamal sweating profusely. I am calm. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am calm. Can we do um, like a like in the cor- in the corner? Lydra is just like there's no point. Oh no! <laughs> oh, look how here is my hair right now. I imagine it's a mishmash, but it's pretty dismal. It's probably like oh yeah, like, it'd be like blue. a. I feel like. Yeah, like a blue and a gray, like a misty, rainy day gray or something. Yeah, a little rain cloud on your head. A little rain cloud. (laughs) Um, Lydra, and I'm going to kind of find you in your corner uh, and crouch down uh, to where you are. You are one of the most brilliant people we have on this ship. If any of us are going to survive, you need to get it together. How kind of she? Well, that's the point. I am one of the most brilliant people that was on that station, and everything I know, it knows. It's the lost cause. I can't do anything. I'm I'm helpless. Hate it. What do you mean, everything you know, it knows? I was going to talk to you about it, but I don't know what you could do. It's it's in my head. It's like I don't know. Have you ever, when you read Trill, do you sense the presence of our previous hosts? Um, I don't sense emotions uh, from previous hosts from you. I. From what I understand about Trill, their memories might be there, but their feelings are one with yours. Well, she's there. They? She? She? She's in my memories. She knows everything I know. Whatever took over Perrin, it's it's in me too. And the only reason I'm not covered in fungus is because... I'm Trill, and parasites don't work the same way. We already have a parasite, the symbiote. Mm. I can't Um, do anything. Anything I look at, she knows. And I'm just saying it and, like, hoping that, like, Perrin doesn't, like, appear from somewhere and, like, start to strangle Tulla. No, I I mean... I also hope that. (laughs) I also hope this thing. (laughs) No, you're just kind of explaining this to her and as you cautiously look around you see Perrin but she's just in the corner watching she's just like pretty much as described in last episode I think like kind of has like a extended maw with like a gash of a mouth and different fungal frills all over her body and her limbs are like really gangly and crooked and she's just kind of like sitting really kind of like like a dog with too long of legs kind of sitting in the corner just like just watching Ugh. as you talk, but <laughs> she's not making a move to stop you at this point. She's just, she's kind of shaking a little bit in laughter, but she's not moving to stop you to talk. I, I, I see, I understand. Um, I wonder if there's something that I can do to help you with that. Uh, back in my younger <laughs> days, um, on the, the catwalk, uh, I would train <laughs> my co-workers to shield their minds from others just as a fun thing in our downtime um and <laughs> maybe that's confused. something i could do for you <laughs> i'm like wait you were 
Tamala's like taking inventory of med- medical supplies and just like. <laughs> <laughs> In my younger days on the catwalk, I trained my fellow models to shield their minds from invasive parasites. It's totally Why like not? a thing that I know. There's, Fashion. There's a lot of it's all over the downtime place. backstage, and that's a thing. Back. What I said could make sense. <laughs> In some capacity. Maybe. Um, <clears throat> I've tried everything else. I mean, I've literally tried everything else, which is one of the problems, I guess. <sighs> um, I imagine this, Kayla, this is something that would be more than like a role, but is that something that Tula and Lydra could start to work on sort of like exercises where Tula tries to for an extended task. Oh, cool. Mm. That's a thing. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So like basically from what I understand, it works very similar to the way that combat works where um, you get to like, there's like a, like it's a 13 whatever like task. And you have to, like, roll those, like, D6 die to see how many, like, things you get off the clock each time you uh, work on it. So you work on it with a regular roll, like, using your attributes and your disciplines. And then I think if the roll is successful, you're allowed to roll, like, effect die. And that'll, like, the the number of successes you get there cuts off, like, six or whatever of a 12-thing clock. Yeah, I'm looking on here. It's I'll, on I'll page mine, it's, yeah. it's on page 90. So um, it says, unlike normal tasks, extended tasks cannot be overcome in a single attempt. Extended tasks should be used sparingly and only in situations where there is additional pressure or tension. So that would really make sense here. Um, there's definitely pressure and tension. Um, let's see. Yeah, so it has a work track, which is like how much work will be needed. Um, so they, if, if they succeed at a task, which is the usual like attribute and discipline, then um, it um, it will make an amount of work, um, which is marked off this like extended task. So you would say how hard you think it is, um, and uh, the base difficulty, et cetera, et cetera. So the number of um, when they ex- exceed when they succeed at a task, so that roll is good. Then they roll two uh, d sixes, um, and then an additional number equal to the discipline used. So for me, if I was doing like a science or medicine thing, it would be like five or six d sixes, and then like, yeah. And then it's just is basically the difficulty. Like a, oh, is the difficulty you, you on this one? Is it zero through five still? A work, track mm, yep. normally, a work track normally has a value from 5 to 20. Okay, so yeah. I would say you're both working together. So you're basically trying to help Leisure kind of work through what's going on or maybe understand it a bit better. Um, mm-hmm. So if you're both working on it together, I would say maybe we should do like something, if it's 5 to 20, maybe like an 8 or a 9. Um, if you're both working okay. together. Because um, you both want the same solution. So the mental stuff is like insight, right? <laughs> yes. Let's see. I have and then probably because she's teaching, like her thing will be like command, right? I would say that, or I'd say, oh, maybe that doesn't make sense. I was gonna say security because it's you're trying to like block. That's true. That's also um, true. Your mind. Yeah, I would. I would actually your mind. say. Yeah, either would work there. Um, so yeah, if you want to go for security, that's fine. Okay. So first we do a roll for insight and security. Yes. And the base difficulty, um, of like the, that roll, um, I think the base difficulty can be modified on each task as, uh, circumstances dictate, but they all start from the same place. Um, it says the. I think the base difficulty is like probably like the the one to five, right? That's the base difficulty. Yeah, yeah. And if so, I would say I would say like a 
three. If we want to do two, three, I would say three. Okay. okay. So does that mean we each need a three or we need three total? We need three like, total. Is this an assisted? Yeah, three okay. total successes. And is okay. this and like you're doing an main pass. Roll and then, Okay. Yeah. You do the main roll right. and then I'll assist you. So I need to meet or beat, or meet or get lower than uh, a total of 14. So okay. I'm going to do five, two, D, three, D. Hey, I did that, yay. Yay, you did. Um, I'm just trying to see, one second. I'm looking at my attributes and disciplines because like, I'm not great at insight or security, so oh, I was wondering yeah. if I could make a, 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 a persuade for something else, maybe. I don't remember where it says what they are. Yeah, and, and I don't know I guess if you want to use it on this, but you do have that crit that oh, Jim gave oh, yeah. to everybody. Can we? Yes. Yeah, we should just Ooh. use that as an additional D twenty in this system. I would say. Yeah. Like just, uh, yeah. But the crit is just the two success instead of the one success. Right? Yes. I don't know. We weren't sure how we use this for yeah. the system. It's Usually it's different. like you get a 20. I don't know if we so, want to treat it like you got a one. Yeah, it's either, do we want to treat it like you get an additional D20 to your roll, or do you want to treat like it it's like it's automatic? I think it's just yeah. like an auto success, like one auto okay. success. Seems fine so to Lisa, me. Cool. if you wanted to use yours, you would just automatically get that third success. Yes. But I also already um, rolled and see. That's true. That's true. Successes. I forgot about that. Well, I'll do one D20, and I'll just do insight and, um, insight and security, which is nine. I have to get nine. Or lower, I do. Yes. So oh, we yay. have three yay. successes, yay. which means that now on the extended task, you get to roll. Uh, I think it's two uh, yeah. d six plus whatever discipline you're using, which you are well, using I'm security. Six. So you're rolling sixty six, and then it's the same as the other d sixes, where I think you have to get like a one or a two, or a five or a six in order for that to be successful. If I'm correct, let me check it again. We're still learning. There's a there's a lot of different things. Okay. Two one two 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 one. Yeah. The total is the total rolled on these dice is the amount of work done. So we already did it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You did it. You did all the heavy lifting. What does our what does our training montage look like? Oh, well, you're just like. It's therapy, right? It's like yeah. It's a lot of like trying to work out what parts of my mind like need to be like shielded against because she's like inside. Like she's internal to me, right? Like so it's mm. it's it's trying like you're teaching me how to like do that and it probably feels really weird. Um, yeah, like because Liz probably sitting there with you and like prodding through your mind. A little bit and seeing I'm what like parts seem to resonate like your with Aaron. Colors. Yeah. 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 And, and like um, trying and to then... shield and then feeling really mad and then seeing if your hair turns red. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And yeah. And then like, yeah, I guess at the end of this, like maybe like i don't know how long this would take like maybe it's just while we're on the ship or maybe it's like while we're on this ship and we get into the gamma quadrant and we find like a moon and we set down and like whatever it is we're doing like on this stupid boat um <laughs> i don't know how, how long how long stupid this track is boat. taking um, um well i will say that yeah you're you're basically just as you head into the wormhole you have your kind of montage you just spoke of and and as things are progressing Karen does go away she kind of like oh yes crawls like deeper into the spaceship and just leaves entirely so you just don't see her after you're done there's a part of me that is definitely like she's just hiding somewhere she's hiding somewhere and she's gonna come out <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna where's <laughs> fuck me up I'm not ready for this but like also I keep practicing because I, I I would like to have a way to have my mind to myself again. Yes. And um, 
Tamal, you said you were kind of unpacking medical supplies or going through medical things. Yes. Um, I would say that you, I know you want to kind of look around the ship, but you had your kind of little therapy. When you entered the ship, you kind of, you entered the big cargo bay area. So it's a big open area. And that is where the medical supplies are. They're in crates. Um, and over on the way on the other side are the stasis chambers containing Perrin's body and Anvil's body. <clears throat> and you, as you start going through the medical supplies to mall, various citizens who look various levels of freaked out and tired, they just come up to you and, and they're like, they just start helping you. They start unpacking things. They start putting up a little sectioned off medical area. And, and they just kind of start looking at you as the leader of this kind of little medical spot that has suddenly sprung up. Okay, um, I will start, like, directing them a little bit, uh, like, telling them where to put things, like, how to organize stuff, um, and I will keep a close eye on the stasis chambers, um, cause now I got, now I'm all freaked out. Part of me wants to see if there's a way for me to, like, eject the stasis chambers into the wormhole. <laughs> well, and, and you're just kind of, like, really caught up and suspiciously looking at these stasis chambers and you feel kind of a, a tug on your leg and you look down and there's this like nine or 10 year old girl and she has wild, crazy hair. Um, she looks like a little ruffian and she just salutes to you and she's just like, ma'am, my name is Clara and I'm here to help. I can lift very heavy objects. I'm here to help you. Um, I will see if, um, I mean, I, I, I'm sure Tamal's like, you are a child and cannot lift very heavy objects, but we'll find something moderately challenging for her to lift and, like, point to it instead of, like, handing it to her to see if she can actually lift it. Yeah, she, she goes over and she just, like, she struggles a bit, but she picks it up and she kind of like duck waddles back over to you with it. I assume it's like a big crate with a bunch of stuff in it. And she just like sits it down and she's just like, no. I did it. Yes. So that is she, what a precious it. bab. Yes, the most precious bab. Tamal does not say the most precious bab, but um, she'll direct her to put it with like um, if it's heavy, I'm assuming it's like uh, like something with liquid in it. So just tell her um, to put it with like the other the other uh, medical supplies. And thanks for the donation. I didn't catch the full message, but it's it looked gross, and I love it. it said, so thank you. It said <laughs> for the of the uh, uh, species eight four seven two infiltrating, <laughs> trying to get back into fluid space through the wormhole. That's no yeah. It's happening. No, that's not what's happening. Um, maybe it is happening. <laughs> or maybe is it? It could be. Oh my so, God. Have, so as you're kind of doing it, Claire's just kind of following you around. Um, she looks like she wants to ask you something. Like she's been really staring intently at you. Um, oh my God, occasionally Clara she'll pull like, two. yeah. <laughs> occasionally she'll <laughs> pull some random objects out of her hair, like and just like she pulls a piece of candy out of her hair and tries to give it to you and then thinks about it again because she clearly is like admires you and wants to talk to you but also realizes you're a little standoffish but she's she's doing her best to help you at the same time um Tamal is reminded of perhaps a favorite character of hers from <laughs> some fantasy series um and will ask her uh, why she feels the need to put things in her hair. Did she read it in a book or perhaps an antiqui uh, antiquated piece of media? <laughs> she's just like, <laughs> she, like look, she like grabs her hair and she looks up at you and she's just like, I don't know what else am I supposed to do with this? And she just, she stops for a minute and she sniffs and she's like, did you kill your wife? Technically, no. Though I did attempt to. My mom we told were not me married at the time. My mom told me you did, and she's back on Deep Space Nine, and I don't have a mom anymore. 
and you're really strong and I want to hang out with you now. Internally. Oh, no. I am not ready to be a mother. Um, <laughs> I am sorry to hear that your mother is on Deep Space Nine still. Technically, I did not kill my wife. That was the fungus. Though, I did make an attempt. I have decided to declare it as a win. My <laughs> rightful win. Well, my, mo my mom is an investigator, and that's not what she said, but she said no one believed her anyway. And then she cried a lot, and I had to leave. Oh. Well, Weidra comes walking up from her, like, mental training session with Tola. And it's like, Clara, what are you doing here? You know Tamal doesn't like kids. Well, I... <laughs> well, I really like Tamal, and I want her to be my new mom. But you have a mom. No. I don't have a mom anymore. We're all going your to die. I mean, likely as that is, your mom still exists, and she doesn't stop being your mom just because she's not here. Well, Tamal steps, steps in and says, we are going to die regardless of the wormhole or not, but your mother is still your mother. It doesn't matter when you die. And she just starts crying. Oh. <laughs> she just like crying, Aww. sits down on the floor and starts crying. I like kneel in front of her and I like like pat her back. I'm like, it's okay. And it's I look up walk backwards away. I'm like, <laughs> I had several kids, one of my other hosts. Despite so you I being like, the better choice, she's just still watching Tamal walk away and be like, oh. She loves Tamal, it's totally fine. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just comforting her, doing some there there's. There there. Um, it okay, don't be cry. It, it, it okay, do, do not cry. Um, Tula, it's occurred to you, if you remember, Greggy was in a really bad state when you left Deep Space Nine, and you have not seen him since being shuffled onto the station. Why do I keep leaving Greggy? I'm the worst. Yeah, I don't the know if you remember aunt. Greggy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, after uh, Lydra leaves the training session, Tula will step out of the room and she'll be like, Oh yeah, Greggy. Um, and I'm just gonna wa wander around hallways going, Greggy, Greggy, are you here? I'll go check the medical bay. Maybe he found his way there. Oh, He's yeah, an but, adult man. <clears throat> yeah, the medical bay. So if you if you went to the medical bay, that's where Lidra and Tamal are right now. So they're kind of there dealing with a crying child. His medical bay is yeah, now a corner of the cargo bay. Eye. I'm dealing with As the crying child. As I walk child. into the door, I'll just say, oh, I sense extreme sadness and betrayal. Um, and I'll look down at the child, and I'll look up at Tamal, and I'll say, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Is Greggy in here? Uh, no, he's not in here, but you also haven't went to explore the rest of the ship to see if he could be another another area of it. Has, um, Tamal, has Greggy come through this uh, this makeshift medical bay. I'm looking for him. Um, have I seen Greggy? You haven't. Um, you basically oh. kind of entered onto this cargo bay area, and that's where you've kind of been, kind of throughout. It's it's really huge, so I assume you all had your training montage on another side of it, and then this corner has the medical bay in it, but there's still, like, a hallway branching out um, straight ahead of you that'll take you to the other sections of it. Uh, that is I, very odd. He wasn't doing well when we left him. He should have come straight to the medical bay. This sounds like a rescue mission. And I look down to Clara and I say, you look pretty strong. Would you like to help us find and rescue Greggy? She kind of sniffles and she's like, I am really strong, but I also think that I should stay here and watch medical if Tamal's going to go with you to go find Greggy. I need, someone needs to be here and be in charge or Tamal's gone. Oh. Oh no, we that can't have the correct. doctor leaving. <clears throat> well, I'll be the doctor I... while she's gone. I know how to put a. I know how to use a hypo spray. I know how to use a tricorder. Yeah. Well, that's very good. And another person, a very tired-looking medical officer, not Peter, someone else, um, not walks up. <laughs> Anybody else? Not Peter. 
um, walks up and kind of puts her arm around Clara and is like, I'll, I'll watch, I'll watch the tent. We'll finish getting set up. Is Peter here? You haven't seen him, but he's probably lurking around somewhere. He's kind of a dick. He's probably there somewhere. Did he get infected? Let's hope so. I, I mean, so. honestly, after all the sass he gave me, yeah. spending time in the medical bay when I wasn't sick, but I yeah. had a terrible fungus invading my yeah. entire body, um, I am yeah. I fucking hope I hope he's dying right now. Maybe you'll find him. <laughs> I hope he's dying right now. <laughs> I mean, we all are. It's true. Sorry, um, okay. Deep, deep. Uh, I guess, um, okay, well, take care of her. And I whisper, like, I stand up and I whisper, like, her mom's back on the station. So. Yeah, and the, the, the woman kind of nods a little. She looks, she's tired. She's just like, it's fine. Got it. You could tell she's probably had several kids, so she's well equipped to deal with it. Cool. Offspring. Um. Uh. So then, I guess. I mean, you, you I, don't have I to. I can't imagine where he mouth. would have been. Maybe we should start in the area where everyone loaded in. I don't know if there Did we get a uh, roster <clears throat> of all of the um, all of the people on the station that have been sent with us? Do we have like a Roll call. Um, you might. Uh, you know that there were bags loaded for each of you, and Lydra, yours contained some data pads with your research and various things like that. You were considered kind of top priority in the people that are loaded onto this ship. So you're probably going to have that information. Um, I don't know All that right. anyone else would. Yeah, I'll check out. I'll check out like the stuff, like sorting through it. Be like, there's got to be a way to like. We need to know everyone that's on board. Um, make sure we're not missing anybody. Hiding out okay. in, the, in the, and she like trails off, like thinking of the Jeffrey's tubes covered with spores, and just like shakes her head. And she's like, "We have to make sure that everyone's accounted for." Like rummages, rummages, like finds the data yes. pad that has everyone's name. Yes, and you do. You um, you kind of in the the bags. Everyone's bags are kind of over next to the medical area. They've all been loaded here. <clears throat> you could see some people picking theirs up and heading down the hallway, presumably to whatever living quarters are on the ship. Um, and you find yours and you reach inside and you find a couple data pads and also a couple little sample tubes. So you can see this is, this is all your research that you were working on. Um, and you boot up one of the data pads and it has a note at the beginning from Julian. No. And it's, it says, it says, Dear Lydra, I hope this will help you. I don't know how I can help you anymore from here. I have to believe you will find the solution and come back, but the odds seem as if they are ever stacked against us, don't they? I will be in touch as soon as I can to help. Please be safe. Warmly, Julian. And then, like, it continues on to the rest of the data. Um, and you do have a list of everyone on the ship, and Greggy is listed as on the ship somewhere. Yeah, so, like, I go through my bag, and I'm, like, saying this stuff about the, like, needing to get a count for everybody, and I, like, pull one of the data pads out, and I guess, like, T Tola's probably, like, with me. Mm hmm And, like, there's a, like, you, you see me, like, pause, and then you probably get, like, this, like, wave of just, like, like heartbrokenness and then like I will I shut my like self off again with the like shields that we've like <laughs> been working on yeah Tula's probably like remember your training <sighs> of course yeah <sighs> okay um <clears throat> well um Tamal uh do you want to and I like uh have the data pad with the thing do you want to um should we should we split up? Should we go together? It, it would probably be faster if we split up. We need to make sure that everyone's accounted for. Um, that is wise. We should we should do that. Um, cover more ground, as it were. Yeah. So if you want to go to the starboard side <laughs> of the ship, <laughs> right. <laughs> And, and I'll take the the port side. The left. Left. Um, and then uh, make sure that uh, there's no crossover. We'll meet. We'll meet together at the four. 
Helm. Bridge. <laughs> Bridge, <laughs> yes. And, uh, uh, Tamal uh, will agree to do that. <laughs> is there anything that I can do to help? I'm very we, concerned just, that Greggy didn't make it here. Well, he's on the list. And since Tamal and I are both splitting up, you could go with either one of us and we'll meet on the bridge and have accounted for everyone, hopefully. So we'll know Phyllis, where Greg like, is. like already leaning over your shoulder to look at the data pad and like using her finger to scroll through it, like an iPad, <laughs> like all the fingers. And she's just like, oh, there's so many people that got infected. Oh my goodness. Oh, she got, wow, that's terrible. I'm just scrolling through. I got fingerprints all over your data pad. All right. So, I'll move um, them. <laughs> remove them. <clears throat> okay. So, so are you going with Lydra or uh, Tamal? Hmm. I think uh, Tula decides to go with Tamal. Okay. Not well, surprising. Um, I'm spending time <laughs> with my roomie, and we should probably grab our bags and claim one of the living quarters for for ourselves. And Boy. actually, you are going towards the living quarters section. Um, Lydra is kind of. Ex- exploring if she's staying on that side she will be kind of looking throughout the cargo bay there are a lot of people in there so where you are right now to be counting them um then if you are moving to the west side that's the habitat and then the only other sections you'll have to check would be the engineering and warp core and stuff and then the bridge and you're going to meet up on the bridge so um Tamal and Tula, you head towards the habitat section where uh, several people, very tired, lugging their bags, are heading towards their Zahia. You walk across a hallway and you can see to your, extending to your left are, is a hallway of rooms. There are far fewer rooms than there are people and you haven't even seen everybody. So you're sure that people are gonna have to double and triple up on rooms to have a place to sleep. And to your right is a hallway that extends and opens up, and you can see that's a little communal cafeteria area. I guess we should start uh, making sure everybody's here. Okay. Um, let us, uh, Tamal will like go through, ver- like go to various people and ask them for their names to like check them in on the pad. Yep, you just, um, you start checking people off. I like to think that Tamal is just like, what's your name? Yes, you're here, and moves on to the next person. <laughs> yeah, Whereas great. Tula is like, um, is like asking about their family and how they're doing and how they're handling the the move. Um, and if there's anything that they need, uh, she's sure um, Tamal as a Starfleet representative is here to help them. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow is like, this is like, uh, and I'll also I, ask everyone if they've seen Officer Greggy. Greggy. Um, <laughs> Officer Greggy. Uh, one young Bajoran woman is like, yeah, I saw, I saw him. He was over. He was in the cafeteria, but he doesn't look. He doesn't look right. Are you related to him? You look. You look similar. I am his uh, his great aunt. Oh, that's good. I'm glad he's got someone here. I tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't he wouldn't say anything. Something I don't know what's wrong with him. I don't know if he's shaken up or what. Well, he has always been a quiet boy, uh, but he hasn't been feeling well. We should definitely go check on him. Okay. Um, so you head towards the cafeteria. Tamal, do you, do you go, or are you still checking people in? Um, I will continue to check people in, but I will, like, do it in the direction of Tula, (laughs) because I know she will turn into a nuisance, so I'm just like... Hey. Like, like making my way in the same direction. Um, Yeah, Tula just runs off to the cafeteria. Yeah, you you run into the cafeteria and you know that you notice that there is one figure at one of the tables and everyone else in the room is kind of giving him a really wide berth. And 
he is his back to you. He's slumped over the table, just oh. head in hands, does not look right. And you can tell it, it is Greggy. Um, Greggy's mm-hmm. usually a very clean, well kept young man, so it's yeah, unusual. I'd rush over to him, definitely. Um, as you do, and you get a good look at him, you can see his eyes are open. He's just staring into nothing. I'm kind of like waving in front of his his face, um, just trying to get his attention. And can I tell what his emotional state is? Can I do a roll to try to focus on him? Yes, um, I'm glad Yay. you asked that. You can do that, but he's going to contest your attempt to <gasps> assess his feelings. This is so exciting. So we're, gonna, we're gonna do a contested task. Fun, what I, I do? I was at that page and I lost it. Why did I do that? I think we just both roll a po- or an opposed task. So um, I think we just both so do we both it. Both roll. Okay. So for me, it was presence and command. The other times I had to. Mm-hmm. It's it's also it's command and insight because you're trying to see you're trying to figure out what's up with them, and he's going to contest it. He's going to oppose yeah, it. Cat. Okay, I will do that. So my insight is 10, my command is 5, so I need a 15 or lower. And he's going to do the same thing, and it's going to be just a difficulty of 2. Oops, I guess I wrote slash die to d All right. And I don't know if we could say I'm like persuading him to let me read him. When I think a one, you got a one. Isn't a one, is a one a double success? Always. Is that how it was? I don't know. I've not rolled a one before. You can say it is. (laughs) Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, one's a double success. Yes. Yeah. So yes. you you definitely he did not succeed, but you succeeded. Um, awesome. So you are successful in probing him, and <clears throat> so you kind of reach out with your your Betazoid empathy, and immediately everything goes black, oh. um, and you are kind of taken to a weird place. You don't know if you're seeing what's going on in Greggy's head or, or what's going on, but you're you're taken to a planet you've never been on before. And it's very dark and you look up in the sky and there are two blood red crescent moons just kind of like in the sky facing each other. Um, and as you look back down, you see these trees, these bone white trees extending up to the sky and about 20 feet in front of you is a is a figure that you recognize as Greggy, but he's standing there now, and he's looking up at the sky. Um, Tula is going to move forward towards Greggy cautiously um, and call out to him. Um, how close do you get to him? Are you going to walk right up to him? Cause he's um, not responding. I, he's not responding to verbal cues. He's not responding okay. to anything like that. Um, I start walking up to him and I guess like if he doesn't respond at all, yeah, she would definitely go right up to him and try to walk in front of him. Okay. Um, well, as you kind of try and segue to the front of him, he his whole body sharply like turns and faces you and his face is just horribly mutated there's that fungus that was growing out of his mouth on the station is there again but it's like reaching out to you with these like dark twisted fingers and before you can react it just like flies out and grabs you in the face and just starts like digging into your eyes and in your nose Ah! and you feel this awful pain and there's just a like a cacophony of voices in your mind that just say it's too late all at once. And you're just like quickly like rattled back to the present and you're sitting there and Greggy's just in the same position he was in just staring into nothing. <sighs> um, Tula, I feel like 
is startled back when that thing tries or does grab her face in the vision. Um, and so in the present, she probably falls back and actually like kind of falls down onto the ground and um, she's gonna sort of back away from Greggy and start calling for Tamal, uh, for a doctor, for anybody who can help. Something's something's wrong, something's really wrong. Um, even though Tamal is used to Tula being Tula, she will recognize that this is like an actual need for help. Won't be as quick about it as I'm sure Tula would like, but we'll go over to her faster than she usually does. Just slightly, but faster. <laughs> Just a brisk pace. Yes, when and Tamal like, gets in... Oh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 go ahead, go ahead. You're good. Just I was gonna it. say, Just when Tamal it. gets into the cafeteria, Tula probably runs over to you and I grip your arm. Um, and it's like really, it's not a Vulcan grip, but it's a, re- a real heavy grip. Um, and I just start stammering. I was reaching out to his mind and I, I saw something and there were these two blood red moons and these white trees and he was standing there, but it was so awful. His face was different and it was so terrible. Um, and as I'm thinking about it, I feel like my hair probably turns like jet black, like the vision that I saw. Um, I don't know if that, so it, if that impresses upon you that this is super sirs. Um. Oh, calm, calm d- down. His face was different. <laughs> like he had like a mustache, or how was it different? <laughs> he had a mustache. You said his face uh-huh. is different. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I'm kind of rushing you over to him and it was not like this. I, you, you didn't see on the ship, but he, his room was overgrown by the fungus, by the infection. And he was covered in, in fungus and mushrooms and they were growing into him. And it was like that his face was so distorted and fungus reached out like a claw and it grabbed me and it was so terrible. I've seen a lot of really terrible things and I felt a lot of really terrible things and this frightens me. Tula will, or no, you're Tula, I'm Tamal. Uh, Tamal will resist the urge to be uh, condescending by saying like you're you're tired and stressed, but we'll take her seriously um, because of the hair thing. And um, is is there a way for me to like gaze over her shoulder at Greggy and, and see? Oh if yeah, you do. Change? Okay, you do. And he's sitting there, and he looks totally normal. Okay, he's just do like I sitting there. Like, Dan him with like or um, something. I don't think you unpacked. Tri- you haven't order? unpacked your yeah yeah <laughs> a you know, space thing. You're talking about. I need you, my you space would... devices to do space science. Blue Jay, Blue Jay, Blue Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just um, hear leaders voice me like you mean like a tricoder. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you don't have your tricorder on you. You can go get it from the medical bay, but you just to looking at him. He's sitting up. He looks normal. He's looking over like, and he just he's just like, is everything okay? Um, Wait, Greggy responds. Yeah, he's like, are you okay? What's what's wrong? What happened? I am not okay, Greggy. I tried to read your mind, and I saw a terrible nightmare vision. Why would you try to read my mind? We've talked about this. You were just sitting there staring and I kind of gestured towards the room where everyone's kind of standing aside and so that, like, this isn't normal. Why didn't you go to the medical bay? I, I don't know, I was tired. I just sat down for a minute. You worry too much. And he just like, I he do- gets up and walks away. <laughs> He's just like- Wait, I do not worry too much. We've been shot through a wormhole. I think I'm worrying the right amount. Tamal, you tell him. He should go to the medical bag. I agree with your great aunt. Perhaps we should take another look. 
fine, fine. And he, he kind of, he, he agrees to go with you back to the medical, medical bay. Okay. We will lead him there. Okay. So you go back and, um, has Leadra kind of counted off everyone in that section of the ship? That would be like pretty much the remaining people. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, I do. I, I, I'm saying hi to everybody and like trying to like keep spirits up and like feeling like a little bit better after Tola like helped me like at least give me hope that I can do something without this creature learning everything I know. Um, and I said that we were going to meet at like the bridge. So yeah, did you go there? Or are you still there counting there's, people? There's communicators. Why does it matter? I just communicate and I say, um, have you finished with the, if your side of the, the ship? Should I meet you at the bridge or? Um, I've, I've yes, gotten... we, we have, um, we have finished. We can, we can reconvene on the bridge. Okay. Yeah. So I'll head there. And do you guys leave Greggy at medical so they can check him out there? Yeah. Let's leave him at medical. Yeah. Okay. I, on our way, I try to do a beep boop with Tamal's uh, communicator since I probably don't have one. Um, oh and I'm just God. like, it was so terrible, Lydra. <laughs> and Tamal's probably like, just like slapping me away, shouting into her chest, like it was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> the things yes, I've seen. I hate this. <laughs> it's against federation <laughs> regulation for you yes. to be using someone else's communications device. But okay, see you soon. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Very. I mean, like, we've already like, been tossed. Within... I think we're dead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> With, within within her mind, Tamal's like, oh my God, for Vidra. Bless, bless up, bless up, fam. <laughs> Once bless in up. your life. Yes. So you you head to the bridge, and Vidra, I will say, the people were treating you kind of as if you were a leader. They were asking you what was going on. Um, everyone here, it seems like, has subconsciously deemed you a sort of captain in this situation. That's a bad idea. I have a two <laughs> in command. What is wrong with you? <laughs> because you're just you're the most competent. You know, they knew you had did all the research. You were giving given all this information from Julian when you got here. So they're just like this. This is the person in charge now. I guess. Um, I'm sure one of my previous hosts was, I mean, uh, the first Odon was a negotiator. He was a pretty good leader guy. Yeah. I have diplomacy. We'll it's fine. It's I'm fine. Sure that helps. It's not really a legit crew anyway. It's a, it's a hodgepodge. Um, so you, you head to the bridge and it, this is definitely a very, very old old, old bridge. Um, everything looks super outdated. The console's locked down on autopilot. There's mm -hmm. obviously the front screen where you can see where you're going and you can see that there's a communication screen um, for when you get calls. Right now, it doesn't look like anything's going out or coming in. It looks like it's more going to be under their discretion as to when you're going to be able to talk to people. Um, nice for them to there? check to make sure we made it through the wormhole okay. Was there any, um, we know that Greggy uh, is a Starfleet officer, myself mm -hmm. and Tamal. There was one mm -hmm. other medical person at least. Like, mm -hmm. are there any other, like if I look at the um, roster, are there any other Starfleet personnel or is it just civilians? Um, there's a lot of civilians and you did notice that when you were checking people off, you were missing two people, but they were engineers. So they're likely back in the engineering room, checking things out right. and everything like that. Um, so you know that they are Starfleet and there you see one security officer on the list. But other than that, it's just a lot of civilians. <sighs> I guess we got our work cut out for us. Huh? Um, yeah. Tamal, do you think that we should Obviously, we're still with Starfleet, whether they think we're dead or not. But I don't know if it would help or hurt to pretend like we're still like a functioning crew or not. 
And I'm like trying to be like, I don't want to be the only one in charge. Please help me make these decisions. <laughs> um, Tool doesn't help. want to be in charge either, but. <laughs> I mean. Tula's just leaning in and she's like, oh, your organization is so fascinating. <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to be here or not, but I am. <laughs> we could. Um, Jamal will look at, at Lydra. She'll look at her and then be like, we. Then she'll like glance over at Tula. We're gonna die anyway. We could put <laughs> Tula in charge. No, that's a, a horrible idea. You're no offense. Right. You're, you're, no, you're right. You're right. I'm just stressed. I am. I'm. My emotions are compromised at this time. I. I wasn't thinking. You're. You're correct. You're correct. She okay, goes to well. present the idea again, and then like, no, 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 no. We won't do that. <laughs> Well, considering your bedside manner is what it is, I think that... Oh, God, I'm probably the senior officer, aren't I? I think you... I actually think you are, like, out of character. Yeah, I think... Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. Um, Tamal, I need you to call together all of the... All of the remaining Starfleet personnel uh, to the bridge immediately. Um, I don't want to say it over comms because I don't want any of the civilians to get worried or think there's something going on there's nothing going on i just need to have a discussion tala you'll be our civilian ambassador slash oh, me and i'm thinking of something that'll make her feel like useful or she won't oh. like get in the way as much it could be like yeah. Alex. Um, that's what they did with him <laughs> the morale officer the morale officer exactly yeah. <laughs> Morale um, I officer, you. little old me. Oh, I, I know that I'm you retired. I couldn't. I know that you have some problems with hypochondria, but I truly think that it will be helpful for you to have to put those aside and reassure others that everything will be all right. We'll get through this. Confidence. Your confidence in me is inspiring, Lydra. You are a natural leader. Um, <laughs> two and a half. Um, <laughs> <laughs> two and a half. <laughs> hey, uh, I know think what? For, for you, I would do this. For you, I would do anything. Great. Um, you like should... A badge? What about one of these? No. And I like, I'm picking at Tamal's communicator. No, no. No, no, these absolutely are- not. No, um, no. I think that no, absolutely. You can cut. Co- you we can communicate at today. any of the computers, uh, consoles in any of the hallways on the entire ship. You don't need I will a badge. Absolutely do this. Make sure that everyone has a place to stay, and if you need any help mediating any of those, everyone should be calm. But if anyone gets upset, just let me know. Otherwise, Absolutely. I'll leave it to you. And uh, Tula, like, salutes you. <sighs> or, I don't know, whatever. I, I space salute you. Space salute. <laughs> That's not how you do. You wouldn't do that. Um, oh, as you guys are kind of figuring out what's going on there, you, um, you hear a rustling kind of just outside the bridge in the hallway and you see one of the engineers that you had seen on your data pad kind of pulling a panel off the wall and looking in and he's he's kind of muttering to himself like oh, okay they have like a jeffrey's tube system here and blah 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 and oh, he, he looks back at you and he's like oh everybody everybody else has picked quarters we're we're all turning in for the night um we set a room aside for you three so Whenever Thank you want to turn in, yeah, you're the you're the first door on the right, and he kind of closes the panel. What's and this he officer's name? Take some news. Um, I'm gonna pick a name for him. We're gonna name him Keel. His name is Keel. Okay. Is he a human he's, or he's a Bajoran? He's a Bajoran. Thank you. Um, Keel. Is it Keel? Keel. Yeah. Uh, I didn't go into yeah. engineering that often. No, um, he's it's fine. I know that there's not very many uh, Starfleet officers remaining on board, but I think it would be, um, and she's like, oh, God, okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing the leadership thing. Um, I think it would be valuable if we had two ships 
and uh, didn't leave the the bridge and the civilians um, without someone uh, to come to, without someone in charge. So, um, of course, feel free to rest up. Um, if there's anyone that feels like they can take a shift um, on the bridge or in engineering right now, um, I know that uh, Tamal will take care of medical. Um, uh, but we should definitely make sure that there's always someone on duty. We might hmm. not be on the station anymore, but we're still Starfleet officers. He says, that's a good idea. If you three wait here, I will go see who I can find and we can start discussing shifts and doing this in shifts. So I'll be right back. Okay. And he kind of heads off into the one of the living quarters. Um, and oh. as he leaves, you hear a chirp on the communications behind you on the on the console. And there is an incoming message from Deep Space Nine coming through. Asp. Oh, shit. Was that this console? I'm not really good at yeah, the main either. The, <laughs> the bridge console. Well... <laughs> I think it's since it's on autopilot, it's just like, do you accept yeah. or whatever? So you can just like yeah. yes. Um, and and Tamal's still here, right? Yeah, you, he yeah, told you all three to up. stay there. Um, Are you a you, lieutenant, Tamal? Yeah, I'm. I think I'm only a lieutenant. Okay, so like you're also like, like fairly like you're not an ensign or a cadet or anything. So yeah. like. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, I want, um, just want to I, say that Tula does have a good con, so I feel like <laughs> buttons need to be pressed. What? She just, she just kind of does it. Pushes the accept or whatever. Like. Yeah. <laughs> God, Maybe there's more it, than Tula. one button. <laughs> um. So what comes through is just a lot of screeching and interference, but oh, you're God. able to make I'm out on a dial. Yeah, you try to clear it and nothing you press the it seems to turn a yeah. dial. Slider, <laughs> full slider bit. Um, How did you? You're, you're clearing guess, it up a I little guess bit, this actually. This ship is, is more from your time, Tala. <gasps> Ooh, rude. Ooh. I mean, <laughs> it's the first time Tula has looked annoyed at anybody. She's usually very happy. Um, and she just pushes a slider up to clear up the message. <laughs> um, it's it's still a little garbled, but you can tell that it's Cisco's voice, and he sounds like he's speaking in a very rushed tone. And and the only things that you're able to make out are received word, help, section thirty one is coming, oh, and then communication is cut. Oh no. And that's it. Oh, and oh dear. I think the I don't know if lead I don't know if anyone would know what that means, but um I mean I don't think you hear, I do like in character, but out of character I do. <laughs> and you hear just also you hear as this is cut, a really loud crash followed by a thud coming from out back towards the medical bay. Uh, I don't know what to handle first. Um, well, this message has been received, and we will have to deal with that. But this sounds like something that is perhaps right. an emergency. Right, sure. That is here let's, now. Um, yeah, let's go to the uh, medical. Yes, like kind of the little officer? cargo bay. It was in the, it's like a corner of the cargo bay. Um, so you're heading back no, to I the ship. I communicator. No, I communicator to them. I'm not oh, going sorry, sorry. there. Um, you yeah. don't hear anything. You don't hear any response. Okay. All right. Then I go. <laughs> okay. Um, you head through the ship, and it seems like it's kind of powered down for nighttime. There's, like, orange lights kind of along the floor. Kind of like old movie theaters that tell you where you're walking because it's yeah. really dark. Um, so you're you're going and you you reach the the cargo bay and there's no one there. There's no one manning it. Um, Claire is not there. The woman's not there. Um, but as you all three enter the room, you can see the the lights that kind of the night lights are around the perimeter of the room, and you see a figure in the corner of the room that's just outside of the reach of those lights and it looks unusually tall and gangly does it look like my vision of Perrin um 
it kind of steps closer and leads right. You do. You see Perrin. You see just like the awful mall and the frills and her eyes are just leaking fungus and her limbs are extended and twisted. She has like really long claws on her hands. And oh before you can like even fully react, um, Tula and Tamal, you see the same thing. Oh my Whoa. God. Oh, Tula will definitely no. react very dramatically. And um, you see, wait, wait, you see it too? Of course I Tamal see it. Oh my God. Like, just be like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there anyone else is in there, the cargo bay? Yeah, I was about to no, ask the same thing. There's no one else there that you can see. You can see the busted open stasis chamber that held her body, and you can see some dark shapes on the ground over in the corner, but you don't see anyone alive. Do I have a phaser on me? You don't. Of course. And she kind of looks and, and laughs, and she walks over to the wall and rips a panel out and goes into the Jeffrey's <gasps> tubes. Oh, what? No! God. No! <laughs> Damn it. Oh. <laughs> I like we as soon as after? she's like as soon as she's like going to the wall, I like run to my bag and like rummage through it trying to find a phaser and I probably like fire right after her. Like when Yeah, you do, it. but you hear like and she's like up in the the tubes. Oh um uh uh Lidra to teal. To Kiel, Lydra, to Kiel, um, there's an emergency. You need to seal off all the Jeffrey's tubes and get everyone out. And, and you hear just like a, a garbled, like, what? What's going on? And then close, as, close the Jeffrey's tubes. And then you, the whole ship just shakes. And like there's a, a, an insanely loud thud, and the red alert goes off across the whole ship. And you hear a verbal announcement that says, Warning, unauthorized boarding in progress. Oh God! Oh, and dear. that's where we'll stop. No! Oh, no! <laughs> Yay! Jeffrey's tubes nightmares. Jeffrey's We're tubes nightmares. Oh my, oh my God! Do you guys remember that episode of Next Generation when Beverly Crusher's like in the cargo bay and it's full of dead bodies and they all sit up under their like cloth? No. Do you remember that episode? <laughs> I like that is one of the scariest things that I ever saw when I was a child, and like scary. all this like horror trek, like it just reminds me of that mm -hmm. episode. Ugh. Oh, but now horror. you're not the only crazy one. Now it's real. It's I'm real not life. The only crazy one that makes me feel so much Yay. better. <laughs> I like okay, how Jamal's response was. No, that meme. <laughs> <laughs> oh well um and we will have a guest we're not going to play next week but we will have a guest on the following one and this will be the mysterious section 31 agent um oh. played by tk joins the fray on twitter they will be playing oh exciting yay so thanks everyone for playing i want to i've been looking forward to this um that you have you monster well, I wanted to ever, I wanted her to be real so everyone could see her. I was like, "Yay, it's gonna be fun!" No. Um, it's super fun. But thanks also, everyone. Like literally having me in charge is the worst. I options. love it. I, have, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I have a two in command and con. I'm no good at either of them, but I guess I do have the benefit of previous lives. So. Yeah, you could do it, and and then Tamal's gonna be the the head medical officer. Everybody's just a like leader. Julian, except for not as hot. Well, I'm the morale officer, the most important. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <I'm> like. <laughs> You know, if I had feelings, they'd be hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. Okay, let's do our outros. Let's do our yes. outros. Because oh, and reminder, uh, I forgot to remind this last time, and I know you did, about the tabletop loot giveaway. Um, yeah. I think that's going on. So do that. Enter it. It's great. Good dice. Um, yeah, if we want to go around and say our outros, Blue Jay, if you want to go first. 
Um, hi, I'm Blue Jay, and I'm a horrible person. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can find me most of the time at twitch.tv slash Blue Jay or on Twitter at Blue Jay underscore 712. You'll be able to find me this weekend at TwitchCon. If you're Ooh. going, I'm going. Um, I'm also going if you're not going. I'm just, I'm going, and it has nothing, no <laughs> relevance on whether you're going to be there or not. But I'll, I would like to see you if you are going. I'll be there. Um, yeah, I'll be there a whole weekend, and then I'll be back uh, get again on my channel after that on the internet. It's great. I don't know. I don't have anything else to say. Yay. And Lisa. I am Lisa Chen at Merciful DM on Twitter. I am going to be at Geek Girl Con this weekend. Uh, so if you're in Seattle, if you're at Geek Girl Con, uh, come check me out. I'm going to be running a spooky themed uh, streamed game. The deal's going to be in it. Um, and running some other D&D games and doing some panels. I'm judging the cosplay contest. I'm real excited. It's going to be a really good time. Yeah, we do Yay. a lot of stuff, huh? And Hadil. You do stuff too, Hadil. <laughs> It's me. Well, I met at the con. Uh, it's me, uh, Hadil. I will also be at Geek Girl Con this weekend uh, playing in Lisa's game. And then if you see me, just say hi. That would be fine. Um, the end. <laughs> That's all I got for you hi. today. <laughs> um, I'm Kayla, and I draw things. And this weekend, the only thing, I think um, I have some Bramblefoot stuff that I'm going to put up. And... Uh, yeah, Bramblefoot stuff. Bramblefoot Adventures. Patreon.com slash Bramblefoot Adventures. Hadil and I do it. Um, then at 9 o'clock tonight on my Twitter, TK and I are going to announce where you can buy our little short Strix comic that we did. So that'll be in like 30 minutes. So you can check out my Twitter and we'll we'll say where that. And that's K-A-Y-N-C-L-I. And yeah, I do lots of other stuff and you can just look at it on Twitter. It's I talk about it. It's fun. It's good times. So yeah. Um, thanks again for watching, and like I said, we won't be playing next week, but the week after we will be, and TK joins the fray, will be joining us and traumatizing everyone, hopefully, or helping, we don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Ooh. it'll be great. Well, I'm suspicious maybe. now. It'll be great, or maybe not. Oh. Who knows? <laughs> okay, right. bye everyone. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy, oh, yeah, happy, happy Halloween. Halloween. Happy goth Christmas. Happy, happy Halloween. Yay. I don't know if Will's we watching. Live here now. <laughs>